Let me show you um, three, one, two, three, three other strategies for how to go about this. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this and you can go on to your next one. And what you can title this strategy is, it's, it's in some ways a simpler strategy. This is called the nearest neighbor strategy. The nearest neighbor. Okay. Now the nearest neighbor strategy is about as obvious as it gets. You, you pick any random starting point. Okay. So for example, you might pick this one. Okay, that's my starting point. And in some ways, this is kind of a formula, right? It's kind of a formula because there is only ever one nearest neighbor to where I am at any given point. So long as you can measure accurately, obviously. Sometimes it's a bit equidistant. But for instance, you can see there's clearly one answer which is closest to this city, right? Which is this guy, right? That's the closest. And then you would get your ruler and you would measure it out. And, um, you know, it might, be, it might be this one. And then you look at the next unvisited city that is closest. Okay, so I'm going to, looks to me, trace out this part here, and then here, 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 okay. Now, this path is different to the one I came up with, okay. There is a very good chance that it is better, more efficient than my first method by intuition, okay. There's a good chance, nearest neighbor, but it's not a guarantee. Not a guarantee. So you remember how I said, oh, it's kind of, it's kind of like a formula, but it's not a formula. What these things are called are, this is a weird technical name, and if any of you are curious, you can look up the etymology for it later. These are called heuristics, right? Um, the common, common language vernacular um, synonym for this is they're rules of thumb. You know what a rule of thumb is? What's a rule of thumb? <laughs> my, pal, my, my thumb will be your thumb. Um, uh, I this thumb. A rule of thumb. I'll oh, just tell you. Wait, hold on your hand just because you play. Uh, you know how to play thumb all right? Yeah. Right? One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. Then you kick off. Oh. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 uh, okay, fine. Okay, so, like, one, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. Dynamite. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> just because you told me you thumb with power, you just. You just <laughs> Okay, now, <laughs> a rule of thumb, <laughs> so a rule of thumb is not about power, it's about something that is generally true, something that is generally true, okay? So for instance, it's generally true that in winter, you should, you know, wear a jumper. That's generally true. It's not always true, right? But most of the time, and this is where these approaches get, right? Most of the time, it will give you a common sense result. A result that's pretty good. Might not be the best one, but it'll be pretty accurate, right? So your intuition's not bad. It's not going to give you a stupid path, but it might not give you the best one. Nearest neighbor, also not necessarily the best, right? In fact, none of these methods that I'm going to show you are necessarily the best. They're all heuristics, right? So there's the nearest neighbor one. As you can see, by the way, if I start somewhere else, for instance, just have a look at that path. Just get into your mind, right? If I start somewhere else, I will get a completely different path. For instance, here we go. If I were to start, oops, wrong end, here. Okay, where is the um, closest city, do you think? I think I go down, right? I go down, right? So then I'm gonna go, now the closest one is here, and then the closest one is, oh, I think it's here, 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 all the way here, all the way there. And you can clearly see, it doesn't take that much imagination to see, this is not as good as the first one. Like, just look at this guy. What a waste, right? Uh, in fact, what would be better is if I did this and then got rid of that guy, okay? But you can see my starting point will quite dramatically change the result I get out of this nearest neighbor thing, okay? So what computers do, literally, is they crunch through all the different options, okay? They iterate. Do you remember that? Okay, so that was strategy number two. Let's have a look at the next one. Uh, the next one pulls on, and you're going to need, yeah, you're definitely going to need a new map for this one, pulls on what we did last lesson, okay? Do you remember, we had a look at these guys. We had a look at these guys, do you remember these guys, right? What were they called again? Space filling curves, very good. So it's a straight line, like the kind of line we're drawing, right? Such that we're trying to visit every point 
in the space, in the area as it goes for this particular example. Okay? Does that sound familiar? We are trying to visit every single thing that's there. So here's the way it works, right? Uh, get your ruler out. Get your ruler out. And what I want you to superimpose onto your next empty canvas is a grid. Okay? Now you look at this grid, it's not a square one like we were doing with the space filling curves. So we'll draw a rectangular space around, like so. Okay? Now this, what I've just created, this is like that space, that square space we were trying to fill up with our, what do we call them? Piano curves, Sierpinski, Hilbert, there's one more. Lebesque curves, okay? So we're going to subdivide this thing up until we can fill it with a space fitting curve. So let's do this, right? If I divide it right down the middle, you can see you roughly get square type things. Yeah, can you see that? So I'm going to treat each square as its own space that I'm going to try and fill. Okay, so for instance, if I do this, let's see, let's go in more detail. Okay, now you can see what I've produced now. Inside yet my color out. What I've done is I've divided this up, and you can see I have a four by four over here, and then another four by four over here. Now you saw I divided it, and then I looked at it and I thought, mm, I think I need to divide again. Okay, the reason I needed to divide further is because basically I want no more than one city per square. Do you see that? You see how I've, I don't need to really divide up much further than this because these guys, these guys, they're all pretty much in their own spot. Okay. Yeah, that one, well, we'll see what we can do with that. Okay. Again, it's a heuristic, right? So what we're doing now is we're taking advantage of a space filling curve. Okay. And you can pick any curve you like. Okay. So for example, one of the first ones we did was I think the Hilbert curve. Do you remember that guy? Um, so the Hilbert curve, I believe, starts here. And I need to look at my diagram to make sure I get it right. Yes, that's right. Do you remember that? Do you recognize that shape? Mm -hmm. Right? Now you can see I've filled out this 4x4. Four four. I've visited all 16 squares. And then I've got another one. So I'll just make another copy of the Hilbert curve. Uh, like so. Is there Hilbert curve more? at the moment, like one part of the labyrinth? That's exactly right. Yes, it is. That's, that's exactly what it is. Okay. Now, what have I got now? This curve now, because it visits every space in this, every point in this space, okay, in theory, what I can say now is this puts these points in an order. Okay, puts them in order. If I follow the Hilbert curve around, I can say this is the first point that I meet on the Hilbert curve. Do you see that? Like, I haven't met any all the way up until here. The next one I meet is this one. Right? Then the next one I meet is this one. You can kind of see what's going on, right? Five. Now over here, yeah, I do kind of have that guy on the borderline, but it's pretty obvious that's going to be six and that's going to be seven. I keep going, looks like eight is here, nine, all the way up until here, and then there's my last one, 11. Okay, so what the Hilbert curve has done has provided me an order. That's what the question is. Like, what order should I go through these? Okay. So now that I have this, I can get rid of the Hilbert curve. The Hilbert curve has served its purpose. I can get rid of it. All I need is that order, right? So are you ready? I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. Yeah, can I? Can I? You can, by the way. Like, I mean, uh, two things. Number one, you can reproduce your own Hilbert curve. You can do that. Or alternatively... I don't have to choose the Hilbert curve. We have all these other alternatives that also visit all the space, and we could use those as well. And they would give us different heuristics and different paths. Some would be better than others. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna wipe it off from left to right. It's okay if you're not finished. Why don't you get your phone out, take a quick snap, and then it's gonna go. Okay. Yeah, it will. But you know, just in case you want to do it like sooner. That's all. Okay. You got ten seconds. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Yeah, well, it'll be different. Yeah, that's fine. Two, one. Okay, it's going. Uh, sorry, I missed. Sorry. The bell's gonna go far too quickly. So. This is harder than it looks. 
I can't remember the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you guys reckon that's enough? Can you see it clearly enough now? Alright, let's trace it out. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exactly the same curve that we have. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now, I haven't gone ahead and measured that, okay? But I do know, as all heuristics do. This will give you a pretty good go, right? And you can also, you can flip things around in here, you can manually adjust it. So I don't know, I don't know if someone got, how close this bears to someone's, you know, someone's curve. That's exactly what I had. Isn't that incredible? Like, do you mean you're one that got 277? Yeah. Now, fantastic. Okay, now obviously what that means is, your intuition might be better than the rest of us, certainly not the first one I did, right? But can you see that mathematics produced that curve? It verified that you weren't just lucky, you were mathematically getting a, you know, a very good answer. Okay.